Website number one, Ozzy Osbourne, <laughs> heavy metal musician. Here's Ozzy's. Here's the Audubon Society. <laughs> and finally, here's Barbie's. Could you imagine switching any of these two sites look with content? Absolutely not. I mean, Ozzy's page done up like this. <laughs> Barbie's page done up like this. Even Barbie's page done up like this would right. look odd. Mm -hmm. Or the Audubon Society, or whatever. The point is, and what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to sort of transition into uh, talking about images, is we're going, to, we're going to remind you of the fact that these multimedia elements don't act on their own. Uh, on, you know, by themselves, that they interact, all right? And pictures interact with images, and images interact with typography, and behind all this is your content. And the images and typography that you use work with your content, all right? So you sort of have a little cycle where things interact with each other. It's not like you can isolate, and say, the typography. The, the images and all that. Taken together, it forms a whole, all right? And part of that whole is the actual content itself, all right? Now, in general, there, there's two things you can do with your, say, typography or images or any other multimedia elements in your uh, content. All right? So between your multimedia elements and your content, one of your choices is resonance. What do you think I mean by that, resonance? Harmony? Harmony. It's a good way to say it. Were those examples, examples of where the content and the look resonated with each other? Yes, absolutely. All three of those are good examples of where the things on the page work together with the content to create a consistent image. Resonate. Resonance. They echoed each other. They supported each other. They, what other word could you use? They strengthen each other. All right? Now, is that the only way to do it? No. Another way would be maybe a very neutral approach where the content neither is supported or resonates with the content nor is it in conflict with it. Um, now you might say that there's a word for this and that would be boring, all right? Um, but if you do have very neutral sort of content, then this might not be a bad thing. Um, it's a case of, you know, letting, um, letting your content do the speaking for you and not your typography. All right? So very neutral. All right? It's the whole thing with simplicity and, and, and you know, and, and simple is sometimes better and less is sometimes more and all that. So in a way, neutral... Well, you can look at it as a negative, but I think it definitely has its place because, again, things 
or simple are not necessarily bad. I would guess I would put in this uh, category maybe a page like Google. All right? Does Google's design, what about it? Um, yeah, I love it. Why? Because it doesn't get in your way. Is it fancy at all? No. Does it complement its content? Not really. All right. At best, once in a while. And this is a funny thing about Google. Google has such a straightforward design that when they do something, like on President's Day, they might put Mount Rushmore up there and all that. It's like a big deal. People are thrilled about it. They're posting it to their Facebook and all that. That just little bit of visual interest. Surprise. Because it's so good. Now, what Google would say is people aren't there to enjoy their design. People aren't there to look at the screen and say, wow, what a lovely design. People are there to get their information. It's almost like an umpire or a referee in sports, right? What do they say about an umpire or a referee in sports? Oftentimes, they say if they're doing a good job, you don't notice they're there, right? When do you notice a referee's there or an umpire's there? When they make a call that you don't like, right? In a way, design is like that. For your average person, they might not even think that Google is well designed. Why not? Because they're not spending time worrying about it. They're finding the things that they want to find. They're using it and getting what they're after. Now, again, we're not average users. We're going to be developing all time uh, media material, so we have to look at it a little more closely. But to resonate, to support the content, to be neutral, and let your content do the talking, I suppose, is the second way. And the third way would be contrast or irony. And we can see a few examples of that. Let's go in and look at a couple different examples uh, from different places. First of all, anyone has ever shopped for a birthday card for someone, especially someone that wasn't like a, a, a young kid, will surely recognize maybe not these exact cards, but cards similar to it. It's not the world's greatest party movie that we're going to look at. All right, let's look at this. This is from the morning, the, the movie Good Morning Vietnam, which is a movie about the, world, uh, the, the Vietnam War.
elements that they're using here, the images and the song, work off of each other, right? In particular, certain moments really work. You know, you see friends coming up, say, how do you do, and they show a, a mob protesting or a group of people protesting. They, uh, they, they, as they're showing all these horrific things, he talks about how children know more than he would ever know. You know, people that experience that, you know, are going to know things that, and are going to see things and witness things that other people uh, might not have, and all that. And that, in a way, has so much greater impact. And, and in a way, if you think about it, sort of the message behind that is, it, you know, it. I wish the world was wonderful like it was depicted in the song and not horrific like it was pictured in the video. So that really can be effectively used to sort of tug at your emotions and, and uh, you know, and, and present things in, in such a way that really stop and make you think, all right? Especially effective, I think, is how they started out, showing very nice domestic scenes, a person in the fish market and so on, and then they built to that, all right? Um, it sort of shakes your attention to see the contrast between those things. It sort of gives you a jolt and makes you think it makes it more memorable, you know? I remember when I saw that movie, I don't know when that movie came out. I probably saw it shortly after it came out. And I could almost tell you nothing else about the, that movie other than that scene, right? <laughs> I mean, I kind of get the idea, right? I, I know Robin Williams was in it and was funny half the time and annoying the other half, all right? But I remember that scene very well. Here's another one, hopefully a little happier one. Yeah, good. Put Google in for the YouTube. In YouTube. Um, the second thing that comes oh that comes up is Abraham Lincoln vampire hunt. <laughs> what is this world coming to? Sort of take it uh, 
with, uh, you know, as it was intended. I'm sure, oh, well, there's one more I want to find. Ah, there's one. There's actually a couple one. Another one for drunk driving, one more for the road, and then lemon underneath a Volkswagen. You know, you don't think of a car being described as a lemon, so if a Volkswagen has in their advertisement lemon, that makes you think, what? You know, what kind of advertisement is this where they criticize their own product? But that gives you the hook to go and read more about it. And likewise, the image of one for the road and the, and the picture of the person, one for the road, you know, you know, could be expressed as something, you know, people out having fun, but they're showing the consequences of that. Now, uh, what you need to do when you do this, though, number one is be sure you know your audience, right? Because the problem with this is people are liable to miss um, the fact that you're attempting irony and are liable to take you seriously. How many people have ever gotten forwarded a news article from The Onion, which is a humorous publication, that someone thought was actually a real legitimate news uh, article? Has anyone ever been? Oh, I, I, I think not so much anymore. I used to all the time, people would send me these outrageous articles. All right. One, uh, uh, there, there was another one um, where as a satirical website was actually mentioned by the Huffington Post, which is a a online news service, uh, and they reported what was said in the article as fact, and as it turned out, it was just it was just humorous satire, and it was obvious to me. The point is, is you got to be sure that people get it, right? And it's especially tough when you talk about um, just images and text, because there's no uh, there's no emotion to it, you know. I've had the cases where I've sent people something, a text or, or an email, and I meant it in a joking way, but they're not here to hear my voice, and they're not here to see me, you know, maybe not li literally, you know, winking or, 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 but they can't read the expression on my voice. So if you're going to do this, it can be very effective, all right? It hooks people in because people can, you know, people are going to think, what? And are going to want to know more about this. And it can create, if done in a serious context, it can create an emotional appeal. If done in a less than serious uh, uh, context, it can be very humorous. All right? Um, so it's important to consider that as we go forward. Because as we go forward, the idea is, how do I want to say this? That you will not have forgotten about everything that we've talked about in all the previous classes. So, let's talk, for example, about your next assignment, all right? Which, again, I put it out there. It's not due for a while here, but, um, you know, I, I put it out there. I know, you know, you folks have a, a week off, and, and you might be anxious about what you're going to do during that week off because there's no classes, and you probably plan on going back and watching some old videos of this class and maybe some videos from some of my other classes. I know, but still, I, I decided to put the assignment out there so you could at least look at it. The next assignment deals with images and making a photo gallery. And it's not just meant to be a photo gallery of here are 10 pictures that I like. All right? It should be a photo gallery that, that has a theme or has a purpose. And that theme can involve something like explaining how to do something. Um, it can be explaining about a place. It could be telling a story. All right? um, there's a lot of different options that you can have, but it should be thematically related. I've had students before talk about like how to do a certain home repair. They did it in a, you know, they did it in a in a slideshow. First you do this, then you do this, then you do this, and so on. It could be uh, I had a student how to hook up your computer to your television uh, to get the, the high def output. And something like that. Um, I've had students that, that said, you know, this is a typical day for me. All right? And then they show, they had photos going and showing, showing all that. So again, it doesn't have to be something earth shattering or profound, but it does need to be stuff that's related together. Explaining a process is a very good one to do because that sort of lends itself into a step by step presentation. Oh, I had students talk about how do I cook something. I forget what they did, but they 
show they demonstrate uh, you know recipe and they add some some photos in there as well you know it should be something that images will help with for example you know is one thing to say you know if you're making cookies make make a, you know get a, a slab of dough that's about as big as a 50 cent piece well I don't know it's been a while since I've seen a 50 cent piece how big is it well, if you actually have a picture of someone holding a little piece of dough that big, you know, the proverbial pictures with a thousand words. So, my thought with this is, again, don't forget everything else that we have talked about in this course. Particularly relevant for this one will be typography. Because the pictures might, and are likely, in fact, not to stand by themselves, right? For example, the person that said, this is my day, and took pictures along there, all right? Um, if there weren't text explaining what was going on in each of those, I have no idea what that story was being told was, right? I just see a picture of someone in a car, a picture of someone in a parking lot, and so on and so forth. Therefore, it's important that it be clear what you're trying to say. Likewise, if you think of a recipe, Pictures with a recipe will help me understand what I need to do. However, I'm not going to be able to tell how to make a recipe simply by seeing a series of pictures. All right, I'm going to need some text to explain it as well. Therefore, be sure to remember everything that we talked about as far as typography goes. All right, this, this isn't a case of, you know, hey, all right, we're on images now. I don't need to worry about typography. No, each assignment should sort of build on all the previous stuff that we've done before. All right? Um, you could, again, either have a case of where your text complements or resonates with your images, or if you want to try irony, um, a contrast there, that could easily be done for, for humorous effect. You know, a picture of me sitting on the couch with a bag of potato chips, on my lap, you know, Professor Hart at work during his office hours or something like that, you know, could be done ironically and could have, you know, humor in there. But again, be sure that whatever you do, it's, uh, it's very clear to the people uh, reading it exactly what it is that you're doing, all right? Another thing I would say is if you're taking that approach of doing things ironically, a little bit of it can go a long way, right? So if I was going to show my day, for example, I probably wouldn't want to have all humorous pictures or all pictures with humorous captions, you know. Uh, otherwise, people would not take it seriously at all, and, and it would get to be overkill, you know. But if you sprinkled a few in, that might really, really be, uh, really be meaningful. Same rules apply as with other assignments. There is first the design, and then there is the actual presentation. Now. I do have some, some uh, digital cameras to borrow, uh, if any of you do not have a digital camera. We're not necessarily looking at, you know, this isn't a photography course, right? We're not necessarily looking at, um, you know, a, a great photography. However, you know, some attention should be applied to it. And some, of the, some attention should be applied to the editing of what you're doing. We'll talk about different things, how you can edit things, you know, how you can uh, edit a picture, how you can change it to black and white, how you can change most of the image to black and white, but make a portion of the image in color, all right? The idea, though, is whatever edits you make in your images shouldn't just be to show off that you know how to use Photoshop or the GIMP or anything like that. It should genuinely be something that adds to the meaning or the emotional appeal or, or something about that. For example, um, I've had people talk about like what, um, I think they, they, they've done this, I might be mixing up a couple of different things, but um, what like a computer's motherboard looks like. And they may be talking about the graphics chip or this or that. Um, and what they did is they took a black and white image and made just the one part that they were talking about in color. It's a nice way to focus people's attention on that particular thing. Now, you have two choices of how to do this in Flash, all right? 
One choice would be to create a slideshow pretty similar to what we've done before. All right? This will be good. This will be extra practice. Again, the big issue or concern with this is um, the, uh, you know, making sure that the slideshow doesn't fly too fast. You know, make sure that the slideshow is slow enough that, that we can actually absorb what it is you're trying to say. The other thing that we will do is we will talk about some simple navigation that you can do in Flash. So in other words, it stays on a particular picture until you click a button. Yeah, I think I already have had one example of that in class, and we'll go over other examples of that as well. Now, as far as your design goes, you may not know how to do that now, but design it however way you think would be better. You know, either, um, you know, show a picture at a time and the, the user has to click a button to go to the next picture, or make it as a continuous slideshow. Now, if it turns out that you're really having trouble understanding the scripting involved, um, it's okay if you back down. In other words, if you, if you take the ambitious approach and say, I'm going to put some navigation in there, and you find, gee, that's a little too confusing, I can't go out and get it to work, you can remove it, you know, with no penalty at all. All right? The whole purpose of this is telling a story, though. Remember, I said that, I think, back on the first day. You know, one of the big things about this class is telling a story. All right? One thing that you will want to consider in your topics is telling a story where images is the best way to do it. All right. For example, if you were going to talk about some sort of music, going to show how, how to play a song on a guitar or something, I'm not sure a, a slideshow of images would be the best way to do that, right? Because you know, maybe a video, or maybe pictures with an audio clip, or whatever uh, would do that. So do take into account, this is the story I'm trying to tell. Make it one that the images actually add to that story, as opposed to uh, not being effective. All right, any questions at this point? What we will do over the next couple times, and unfortunately this topic will sort of be split, uh, insofar as we'll do some of it this week, I'll finish up today, and we'll talk about it on Wednesday, and then we have spring break, and then I'll pick up on it to talk more about it. So, you know, it would be n it, in a way it would have been nicer if as soon as we were done with audio we had spring break, but, you know, it happens. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Let's talk about some background about, inform 